Okay, after we finish talking about hand tools and hand saws, uh, it makes sense to start uh, looking at some of the power tools we're going to use. Um, your table saw is an important uh, tool in any woodworking shop, but it's very useful in your aircraft shop because you're often going to have to recut wood, meaning you're going to have to take a large flitch of wood and turn it into the smaller pieces you need. Um, this is a standard uh, commercial grade uh, table saw. It's about two and a half horsepower. Um, some of the features and some of the things that you'll find uh, useful is to have an extension uh, fence, meaning that you have the table that is longer than just the uh, actual table saw. Um, you're going to want a good uh, side fence in order to make accurate cuts between the blade and the, uh, this fence. Um, the other thing is you want to look at the variety of blades you're going to need. Not all blades are the same and they don't do the same job. Um, this is here uh, just a standard uh, Irwin uh, 40 tooth per blade uh, saw that I use for cutting general wood. Uh, you can use it to do cross cutting or ripping, meaning crossing the grain or ripping with the grain. Um, the teeth on this saw uh, have a curve to them. One goes one way, one goes the other. And that's to uh, tear through the wood and eject the uh, swath, the, the, the sawdust. Um, the other type of uh, saw blade that you're going to want to find is a zero curve blade. These are usually called panel or laminate blades, and um, they may have them in your local hardware store. Um, that's what we have installed right now. Uh, I'm going to demonstrate cutting some thin ply in just a minute. Um, besides your uh, fence, which is held in place by a clamp, and there's a measuring tape along one edge, there are a couple other things you're going to want to make or buy. Um, these are what are called feather boards, and um, this is a piece of uh, pine, clear pine, that um, we've cut slots in. And we use that with a clamp to uh, hold pressure down on a piece of wood in either direction as we pass it through the saw. And that keeps it in place, and it also protects, uh, provides you know, protection for our, our hands. You want to be very careful, of course, working around the saw. Um, we have different size feather boards for different applications, and we're going to, you'll see some of these uh, in uh, use when we're doing some of these demonstrations. The other thing is um, the gar uh, guard that goes where the blade is. When you're making general cuts, rips, or uh, cross cuts, it's, it's okay to have a nice big wide area uh, where the blade comes up and allows the sawdust to fall through. But there will be an occasion, uh, quite often when you're doing thin material or cutting thin cap strip, where you're not going to want uh, any kind of gap. So what you have to do is you take uh, your guard and you make a pattern out of the correct thickness of plywood. This is a piece of cabinet grade plywood, exactly the same thickness. And when the blade is down below the table, you very carefully put your blank in. You start your saw below the, th the wood and you raise it up through. Just one time, be very careful. Uh, you can either uh, hold it, you could tape it, or one of the useful things that we have in our shop that we use all the time is a magnet. And that holds that. Now we've cut a nice thin cut through our guard and this enables us when we're cutting thin plywood or material, nothing gets pulled down by the blade. Another very good use for this retrieval magnet is if you're cutting a big piece of material it is possible that your fence could move on you so what i like to do is i like to lock it in place at the distance i want and then i take my big retrieval magnet and i put it right on the edge and you'll take a look the magnet is sticking to the fence and now we have a real good uh, rigid uh, fence to guide our piece of material through it's just a simple trick that you can use Another uh, simple trick that is really helpful, and we'll want to zoom in on this, you have to set the angle of a blade, okay? And you don't, there's a guide and, and uh, on the edge of the table saw, 
But what's a better way of doing it? Well, a better way of doing it is with this little um, digital inclinometer. It's very accurate to a tenth of a degree. And what you would do is you would place the inclinometer on your metallic blade and you go down to your adjustment on your fence and you'll be able to crank in exactly whatever degree of cut you want. Once you're settled, you tighten down the blade and now you have exactly a certain set degree for your saw blade. It's very helpful. We use this all the time for a number of different applications. So you might want to think about getting a digital inclinometer. Okay, so in addition to our uh, angle fence that we use to get nice straight cuts, there's another fence you're going to want to have. And it's, and it's for doing cross cuts. Now this is a standard cross cut fence that came with the saw. But as you see, we've put an extension on it. Uh, it's just a piece of uh, scrap particle board. And what it allows is for you to uh, have a piece of wood like this and have very good control as you guide it through the uh, saw um, to make different cuts. And of course, you can change the angle to meet whatever need you have. Now what I'd like to stress is, for safety reasons, you don't want to have your um, fence here and have a piece of wood and cut through with the fence because what could happen is it could get jammed between the side fence and your saw and that could be dangerous. So you always want to have a clear space. It's okay to use the, the fence um, as a measuring device because you have this nice tape and you can set it to whatever you want, bump your piece of wood up to that fence and then just release the fence and push it out of the way so that it's, this portion is not riding on your fence. But um, by having the longer uh, piece of scrap wood on there, we're able to uh, have a more stable cut than if you just used the uh, six or eight inches that came with uh, this fence. Now one of the other things that are common um, maintenance issues that you're going to have is you're going to have your saw blade and you've used it and eventually you're going to build a uh, pitch on the blade from the wood and so you don't want to uh, necessarily dispose of the blade it just needs to be clean so how do you do that conveniently well an old trick that's very easy to do is to use a piece of tin foil or wax paper or plastic and simple ready at your grocery store oven cleaner and put your blade on that surface and just give it a squirt. Now we want to leave that sit for 15 or 20 minutes and that'll soften all the pitch and then you can come back uh, with either a cloth or a paper towel you don't need anything more abrasive and you'll be able to wipe all that pitch off. We'll give that a few minutes to sit We'll work on something else and we'll come back. Okay, our first demonstration with the table saw is going to be cutting some thin mahogany plywood for the leading edge of our wing. Um, most of you have experience cutting wood probably on the saw in a cross cut or ripping fashion, but this is a, a project that takes a little more experience. Um, in advance, we set up an infeed table. This is just a piece of particle board that we use in the shop. I'll show you on the bottom is a cleat, two pieces of wood that are glued and screwed, and we have our roller uh, stands. The cleat is to stop, obviously, our uh, piece of wood from rolling across. We want to use uh, the in feed table on this thin stock rather than the roller bars because this, the thin material has a, a tendency to uh, wiggle and move on us. Coming to the saw, we talked about the feather boards, and here's one installed. Um, we pre-positioned a piece of our plywood in advance to get the right height, and our fence is locked in at the right width that we want to cut our leading edge. And once you'll see, I'm using my retrieval magnet to clamp down just to make sure everything stays put. As we get the saw through, I mean, as we get the panel through, I'm going to be using a push stick, not my hands, to get the uh, wood through. In this instance, we have a thin kerf saw blade, zero kerf for panel work, and a thin cut out for 
the uh, table saw. So here we go. You want to raise your blade just so that the carbide is above the thickness of the wood. You don't need the blade sticking up a great deal. Our, our panel is pushed up against the fence. And we're going to guide it through now. Sometimes, in this instance, you might want to use a piece of wood as a flat weight. It holds down your panel. Make sure that you keep the panel close to the fence. Make sure your wood is completely clear of the saw blade and then turn off the saw. Don't do anything until the blade stops. Okay, so there we go. We've taken this beautiful thin piece of mahogany ply and we've cut it into a very accurate strip for our leading edge with two clean straight edges. And we're going to use this in a little bit. Uh, for demonstration on steaming and we're going to form it on the wing later on.